Welcome to another thrilling episode of Independence Update where we highlight yesterday and tomorrow today. I'm your host Kevin Neal Smith. Let's dive in. On Tuesday, October 3rd, the Township Board of Trustees held a regular meeting. They began the meeting with public comment on the future of the Bailey House located on Sashaba Road. In regular business, the board approved quotes for renovations happening at Clintonwood Park. There was also approval of a new full-time GIS technician for DPW. On Wednesday, October 4th, there was a Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. The board heard a returning case where they requested the person come back later with more information before they could take action. The board also heard four new cases and approved all four. The next Township Board of Trustees meeting will be on October 17th at 6 p.m. There will be an Independence District Library meeting on October 16th. Remember, the tapings of government meetings can be found at independencetelevision.com. We recently had an opportunity to catch up with Trevor Wynn from Independence District Library for a chance to hear about what they have going on in the month of October. And we would like to share that with you now. Hey Trevor, thanks for meeting with me again. Hey, it's really hey good Kevin, seeing thanks you. for coming back to the library. Oh, I love it here. So tell me, what are some things coming up for adults here at the library? There's a lot of great stuff going on in October. October's a super busy month. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is our next free concert, which is on Sunday, October the 8th. It's at 2 p.m. right here at the library. Um, the artist's name is Matt Ball. He plays a piano. We're going to have some swing music um, and some blues music. It's a family concert right here at 2 o'clock on the 8th. It is a Sunday, and it's free. So if you're, if you're not doing anything, you know, come on down. It'll be fun. What else do you have coming up in October? So we are in the middle of our first ever <clears throat> adult art show. Uh, we do a teen art show, which a lot of people know about. We'll be sort of doing an adult art show this year. Um, we're in the middle of it right now. Um, we're actually going to have a reception on Friday the 20th of October at at 6.30, we're actually keeping the library open. Normally we would close um, at 6. We're keeping the library open on, on October 20th. And all of the adult art is going to be on display in our community room. We're hoping to attract a lot of the artists that have, um, you know, have entries. Um, and there's actually still time. So if there are artists in the community, a lot of them are local that we have already. If there are more artists in the community that want to submit, um, they can actually do that until Friday, October the 13th. So we, we've got some really awesome submissions. It's going to be fun. There's going to be refreshments on, um, on Friday the 20th, and it's going to be fun. Is and to be able to see what's going on, all the, um, um, all the local artists in the community that have submitted. That's cool. Is that the first time you guys have done that? It is the first time. It is the first time. And uh, based on the reception, it's probably something that we'll continue to do because there's a lot of awesome artists in the community. Everyone knows that we have, you know, Clarkson Cultural Arts and Denise does an awesome job. Yeah. Um, and so she's helping us out with that as well. Is it uh, a particular theme? Is it like Halloween so theme? So it is not a Halloween theme, but I will say that um, whether it's painting or photography or sculpture, um, we're really interested in all of that. As long as you can physically carry it here without much work, um, we w will put it on the wall or put it on display for um, our reception. So, whatever you're feeling, whatever kind of artist you are, we're you know, we're happy to take that art, and it's going to be a competition. So it'll be fun. Cool. Um, now I also heard you have some Halloween parties coming up. So there are two Halloween parties on the 28th. Um, the first Halloween party is Boopalooza. It's the third time we've done it, and this is um, this is our party for children. There's going to be crafts. Um, they're going to be trick or treating around the library. There's going to be uh, you know opportunities for them to have their costumes on. It's going to be fun, and then <clears throat> following that at, at four thirty um, is going to be our teen party. And so the teen party, they're going to decorate cookies. They can also wear their costumes and crafts. It'll be a fun time. Again on Saturday, October the twenty eighth, both parties. Cool. Are there like volunteer opportunities for people to help out with these types of things? So that's a great question, and um, we have an awesome teen lead program. Uh, that our teen librarian uh, is in charge of, and she has an awesome group of teens that have said, you know, hey, um, I'm looking to develop my leadership skills. You know, how can I help the library? So, if there are teens that are interested in volunteering and you know really having a say in the programming that the library does for their age group, I encourage them to contact the library. They can ask to speak with Alexa, who's our teen librarian. Lots of volunteer opportunities, and she has a really really good group. Cool. Now, is that all the stuff for adults? There are, believe it or not, more <laughs> programs for adults, Kevin. Um, everyone has seen Antiques Roadshow on TV. Um, we're going to bring a little bit of that to the library. Um, this program is on November the 7th, so it's not PBS, but it's Duma Shells, which is j just as good. Um, if you've not heard of Duma Shells, it's an auction house. It's in Detroit. 
uh, it's right across actually from the Rensen. They're gonna be here on November 7th. And so what people are gonna have the opportunity to do is to pay $5 and they will be able to have one item um, appraised. And so what they need to do, if you have an item that you're interested to know the value, you need to contact the library, we'll sign you up, and then we're actually gonna request that you send us a photo or two of your item because we're gonna send those to Michelle's in advance so they can do some research. And so when you come on November 7th, um, they will hopefully already have the research done for your item. This is really cool. Um, it's in conjunction with the Historical Society. It's kind of a fundraiser for them as well. Um, and so Dumashell's is gonna be here. It's gonna be fun. If you have an item, you know, look in the attic, look in the basement, see if there's something <laughs> you've been, you know, re really wanting to know. Now's your chance, of. right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Dumashell's will be here on the 7th of November. That's cool. It's a Tuesday night from six to nine, but you need to reserve your seat in advance. It's important. If I need to call and set up an advance, what's the phone number here? So if you're looking to reserve a seat for um, our Dumas Shells event, um, I encourage you to call the library as soon as you can. Um, our number is 625-2212. You can ask to speak with Lawrence. Uh, he's our, our head of adult services. He's in charge of the Dumas Shells event. Um, he will be the person that you send all your images to um, you know, for your item that you want to have appraised. Cool. Now is that the final? So lastly, Kevin, <laughs> I want you to know that we are standing from another cool program that's going on right now. This is the Altered Book Contest uh, that we have going on. This um, represents entries from the community and from library staff. Um, really awesome things people have done with books. Um, you know, believe it or not, we're actually okay with you altering an older book that is not in circulation. And there are some really, really super cool things. Uh, this is a book from, I believe, Harry Potter. It's very hairy. Lots of cool things. There's a knife block. Um, Dig this one here. Yeah, this is from, it looks like, this is one of our teen submissions. And so the library staff is gonna is going to vote on some of these, and then um, we'll have a winner. And there are some gift cards to win. So come on, cool. In the, you know, down to the library and look at some of the submissions for the altered book art contest. Do you just do that once a year? Or we do do it once a year. I think this is the third annual altered cool. book contest. So we had some awesome submissions last year, um, and this year is no exception. Knife block. That's exactly cool. right. It's just kind of really cool, imaginative thing. So lots of artists in Clarkson, and we love to kind of allow them to showcase their talents. Very cool. Lots man. of ways. Very cool. Is that the last time? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of stuff going on in October. Well, it sounds like it. Hey, thanks for meeting thanks, up with Kevin. us. Looking forward to it. On October 21st, Friendly Forest will be happening at Clinton Wood Park again from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Tickets must be purchased ahead of time, and they are sold in 15-minute intervals. This is a great family event that everyone can enjoy. Join Parks, Rec, and Seniors with your little witches and princesses, ghosts and goblins to collect goodies from all of their favorite cartoon and fairy tale characters. Walk a decorated trail with authentic backdrops that will keep you peeking around the bend for more. For questions or to get tickets, call 248-625-8223. As always, if you are looking for more events happening around town, make sure you check out www.clarkstoncalendar.org. I recently sat down with pastors from some of the community churches who help make Community Impact Weekend happen every year. We would like to share a segment of that interview with you now. Hello everybody, we are here today with Pastors Jonathan, Dan, and Chris, and we're going to be discussing Impact Weekend, so let's get right into it. So Jonathan, I believe you're my history guy on this. That's um, right. How did this all come to be? The, the history of this is a number of things have come together, but um, Clarkson Community Church and Calvary Lutheran, we had, uh, both of us, had weekends where we did what we called the Church Leaves the Building. We're all used to church being about people coming to the church, but um, our commitment, and I think the commitment of certainly our churches that are up here, and I think all of them in the community, is to make a difference in the community. So one Sunday a year, we would either have a very brief worship service or none at all, and then leave to go serve. So we were the church in the community. Well, Clarkson Community in Calvary said, well, you're doing this, we're doing this. So what would it be if we supported one another's, did two a year, and then that combined with the, the whole My Habitat Clarkston initiative, which is really to move well beyond the churches. So even though this began in churches, I want to be clear, Community Impact Weekend is not a church thing. Right. It's a community thing. It's something that all of us are about in the community. One of the things I like to talk about with this is you know, there's so many people that care about our community, so many people that want to do something, make a difference. And so often, in so many community organizations or students or whoever it may be, uh, corporations, 
Um, but we all sometimes do this in our own silos. We're off doing something really good. We aren't sure what the person next door or the organization down the street or whatever the case um, is doing as well. And, and this really is, the idea of this is an effort to pool the resources, pool the uh, volunteers, seek a whole bunch of different kinds of projects at all different kinds of skill levels and uh, energy levels and involvements and get everybody working together to see what kind of an impact can a community like Clarkston make in a weekend. And so it began as a day in individual churches. It's now blossomed into a full weekend that involves over a thousand volunteers and community organizations, churches, schools, um, individuals, businesses, corporations, uh, our whole community. And that's what's most exciting about this. What's cool about that is you basically, you went from maybe combating or fighting for resources mm -hmm. and went to sharing resources, right? Absolutely, and, and the collaboration, because the idea was that um, when we, our church we have a saying that we do things better together. And, and, and we mean that on so many different levels, and that's absolutely true in communities, because yeah, rather than all of us trying to seek these resources to do something, if we pool those, and especially that volunteer time, um, we can accomplish so incredibly much more. And that really is that vision for My Habitat Clarkston. So this is part of what My Habitat Clarkston is all about. Um, the Community Impact Weekends, which are um, annually now, um, the first weekend in November and the uh, last weekend in April. And, uh, and then My Habitat Clarkston also, occasionally every year or two, We'll do a major home renovation or build, the, uh, which is sort of the traditional habitat thing. And then um, the other piece with that is as a community clearinghouse, because we know that there are needs in the community, and we know that there are some resources and volunteers. How do we pull these things together? Yeah. And so that's the big picture of this, which is really to, again, using that image of the silos. It's to get all of us out of our own individual good things so that we can do a really great thing together, better together. Now have the projects grown in scale once you guys started to come together? Yeah, um, I've been involved in several of them well before we came together and mm -hmm. broke down the silos. And uh, yeah, the projects have grown from, it started out with you know raking leaves at senior centers and, and now we're building decks and we're uh, painting at Lighthouse and we're doing food gathering, we're lighting redder, letters to, uh, to soldiers and uh, and still raking leaves and still there. raking leaves. So <laughs> and so it, it's a really a combination of things. And we'll plug in quite often with uh, several of those nonprofits that have things that need to get done. If it's neighbor for neighbor or lighthouse or Oakland Hope that needs work done, so that they can continue their uh, great work in the community. That we can provide a lot of volunteers for that. So uh, it has grown from a little bit to. Like, like you said, it was uh, a thousand people, uh, and it, it's, you talk about Saturday and Sunday, and it's grown, it's even Fridays. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, that's right. Uh, and then projects that don't get done get taken care of even later on in the, in the, in the months afterwards, so. That's it's, cool. It's great. What are, what are some of the other, you mentioned a lot of nonprofits are involved and a lot of um, members of the community are involved. What are some of those organizations? That maybe Chris can share maybe yeah. Oakland Hope. That's yeah, and just a, a collaborative heart. Uh, we, we are better together. And so there's a, a big invitation to organizations in our community. Oakland Hope is one of the big ones. Uh, Draw, Disaster Relief right. at Work is, is a big one. Uh, Clarkston Schools, uh, Library, uh, the, the Rake and Run Seniors, and, and just many, many opportunities uh, to plug in and be involved. See these great organizations. And you guys have been a part of it for about two years now? Yeah, a couple years now. And, and I, one of the things I love about it is the collaborative heart that exists. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a, this, this idea that we are better together. And when we do this in the community, we resource better. We, uh, we learn more about the organizations and how we can help out. And one of my favorite things about it is that it is a springboard. It's an opportunity for us to learn more about these great organizations that are doing great things. And I've had many families, many people uh, share about how they learned how they could help out in the community better. And that's been a great thing, uh, hearing uh, uh, grandparents say, hey, I want to bring my family and come do work at Oakland Hope. Or, hey, I want to be involved in DRAW throughout the year. And uh, yep. Community Impact Weekend is a great springboard for that. 
That's good. And it involves all ages, because you mentioned family, because it's something that you can bring the kids to. It's not just an oh, adult yeah. thing or teens. We have, always have projects that are going to be appropriate for practically all ages mm -hmm. and, 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 all, and it, all skill levels, too, yeah. because it's not the thing where you have to, I mean, if you have to have a skilled trade, leave me out. So <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. but, uh, but what it, it means is that all of us can, can get our hands dirty or get, uh, roll up our sleeves and make a difference in the community. And it's great. And, and Dan and his team and Deb and, and uh, her team really work hard with the organizations. We do meetings through, you know, leading up to it. It's not just the weekend happens, but there's a lot of preparation that goes into it uh, in working to make sure there is something for everybody across age groups. Exactly. If you'd like to see the full uncut interview, search Impact Weekend Discussion Uncut on our YouTube page. As always, if you're looking to catch any shows, you can tune in to Channel 10 or you can check out our YouTube page under Independence Television. You can follow us on Facebook under Independence Television to stay up to date with all the things we have happening. And here at ITV, we are always looking for new show producers, so if you have a show idea or have an event you'd like to get covered or highlighted in some fashion, you can get a hold of us by emailing update at independencetelevision.com or you can call us at 248-623-3661. Thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you next time.